yesterday evening and this afternoon as well. We're going to talk Limerick Galway before we talk to Tom Welch later on. He's going to give us updates on Clare against Kilkenny. It did finish Limerick 224, Galway 118 yesterday. Galway started very well and then Limerick did what they do and did it in brilliant fashion. Uh, we'll start by getting a word from John Kiley. So he was asked, naturally enough, this was one of the talking points all week about the absence of Declan Hannan and then, as it turned out, the role that William O'Donoghue played at centre-back in his absence. Really happy with how he did. You know, we made that decision pretty pretty early doors, and he's embraced the the challenge. I suppose really, you know, because it is a huge challenge to go from midfield to centre back. You know, at this level. Um, but like, listen, Declan is our, our leader you know, of our group, and if you're going to put somebody in there, they've got to have real leadership qualities. So William has that, and you know, I think it was a big ask. But when you have somebody like William that's taken on that challenge, you can be confident that's going to be a positive outcome. Yeah, and it sure was. The uh, story of the game, as I'm sure you've seen at this stage, is that for the first 25 minutes, Galway were in great shape. They were six points up. And then uh, Limerick seemed to just wrestle back the game and the remainder of the game finished Limerick 118 to Galway's six points. So Henry Shefflin, very disappointed. Uh, He talked about Limerick's comeback and then that very decisive third quarter just after halftime as well. Going in half time, one point up, felt like it wasn't just enough for ourselves again, you know. So, um, and then, you know, I said, we're, you're hoping, we knew Limerick are a strong quarter three team, you're hoping just to stay in the game and start to come a little bit. But I said, all the momentum, it was, it was like as if they were just starting to really get going and ratchet it up. And uh, yeah, they were just, we were putting out fires all over the place. And just that middle third, you know, half back midfield, half forward line. They just started to dominate there and uh, we just couldn't get any foothold at all in the game. So that was Henry. Ryan Dwyer has played for Tipperary in Dublin. He joins us on the line now. Afternoon, Ryan. How are you, John? How are things? Yeah, very good. So uh, Limerick do what they do. How impressive a performance was this as they head into another All-Ireland final and look for four in a row? Uh, look, they were impressive. Uh, even in the first half, even though Galway were, were winning, um, Limerick were still impressive in, in bouts because like they, they went out from the start. Um, got, like Sheffield was very honest there. Uh, he said one pint at half time wasn't enough. It was looking very optimistic. They were up after 25 minutes. The, the score was uh, 112 to 16 for Galway. Uh, and then Galway missed the goal chance. And Nicky Quaid went down. And I suppose a, a, a bit of dark arts. He took the helmet off. The, if whatever about an outfield player, you can play on, you can't play on with the goalie with the helmet off. Um, but then the remaining 45 minutes that was left, Limerick just outscored 118 to six points. And it was just, it was just, a, I suppose, the experience. It was the, the flow. But also you'd have to question um, the answer that Galway had for them. Yeah, they would do, Galway were phenomenal for the first 25 minutes, but just, they couldn't dram at home and I suppose if you go back to the Leinster final it was the same they were really good in sports but couldn't finish out the game um, and I think that has been a problem for Galway during the league and in the championship as well they just they didn't finish strong um, so you'd have to question it there uh, one well there was a few highlights for me one thing uh, even though Limerick won fairly handy at the end nine points in the end their first sub was Colin O'Neill after 55 minutes they didn't bring on the four other lads till the 60 Conor Boylan 68 or sorry Graham Mulcahy 67 minutes Conor Boylan 68 and then Adam English and Ocean O'Reilly 72nd minute so you'd have to question even though they had the game won I know maybe wrong thing to say that they had the game won because it wasn't over but they, they were in a comfortable position but they only rattled off four of those five subs two minutes left in the game so it would make a question now I know that Hannan's missing Finn is missing but it would make a question the the depth that Limerick have and if one or two injuries do happen to key players do they have lads to replace them um, so yeah look there, there's a lot of questions for them going into the final but they are, look they are the form team I think they're still in prime position to win Dollar Ireland I think they still will they will win Dollar Ireland and possibly next year as well but I think 2025 is when things are going to 
turns out for Limerick <laughs> you might take that uh, <laughs> I mean most teams would give uh, their right arm for that kind of situation I think yeah. so very true they're very going true. for four in a row five and six only Cork in the 40s and Kilkenny as we know in the 2000s have managed four in a row and nobody's done five yeah. in the hurling so it would be a historic achievement if we go back to the first 25 minutes of the game Galway six points up what were Galway doing why were Galway on top in that period? Because, I mean, they definitely seemed to have a plan. Conor Whelan left inside on his own, very bunched around the middle, very definite thinking around the puck out strategy as well. And for whatever reason, it was all working. Yeah, and but like I, I think from the very start of the game, Galway played with pride, passion and intensity. The intensity they played at was phenomenal. And there's no way they could have kept it up for the full game. But I suppose every game you're going to have uh, your peaks and your valleys. But like Galway were never too far out of the way. Like even though, or sorry, Limerick were never too far out of the way. Even though Galway got off to a great start and they were popping over points and playing with real intensity and, and hunting in packs as well. Mm. Um, Glenn, after five minutes, just gave a, a, a kick in the the teeth to to Galway with that goal. Probably against running play. I don't know. Was it a shot? from Tom Morris here the delivery in um, but Glenn leaped above uh, Dahi Burke and in fairness look Glenn I'm not taking that away from him, but your, your money will be on Dahi Burke for that because he's a big strong man he relishes that that physical contact and that ball coming in and nine times out of any clear it but Glenn leapt came from behind leapt uh, and it was a real it was real kicking the backside for Galway yeah. um, but they responded and they responded well um, either Evan Nyland frees three points from uh, Brian Concanon and uh, I think Conor Whelan uh, popped over two points in, in that space of time um, and then the, the goal in the, the 15th minute from yeah. Colin Mannion which was a phenomenal goal I actually as I was looking at it I said geez, he's, he, he was narrowing the angle for himself and I said geez, they hit it hit it and then he went too he went too close to the end line we'll say, and I said geez, that's his chance gone but then he, he rallied I, I, I wouldn't have put money on him to, to beat Nicky Quaid from that angle but he did and it was a rasp I didn't even see it going in I just mm. saw the, the net moving um, and then that 25th minute it just it, it's like the a turn of a screw that Limerick just decided well I, I, I think Nicky Quaid breaking the the momentum yeah uh, with the helmet off I, I think that was a fact because it's it's interesting on that point right so you, around the period you're talking about the Mannion goal and Galway being on top and just winning breaks you know that's that kind of intangible and in hurling they're just picking up breaking balls and coming out better in tackles and tussles and, yeah. and on top Limerick are also weighing in with their fair share of average enough wides and quite a few of them yeah. in a row and there's it's just kind of this grumble in the stadium Jesus this is going to be one of those days you know because these are bad wides and Galway looks sharp and Whelan's yeah, doing and damage they, I, I, they, had to, they had to change men on, on Whelan um, but, but even before Quaid like put a real stop in all momentum uh, it was noticeable there were one or two occasions where he was taking his time with puck outs and Shefflin was going mad on the sideline as if to say well, come, on, come on come on come on he was he was going he was losing the head in the sideline but yeah but look that that comes from a winning team they yeah. know how to they know how to control the pace of the game uh, whether they want to speed things up or slow things down in, in this case um, but yeah look it, it was it was noticeable he was taking his time on the puck outs he'd walk to one side of the goal then walk across the goal bouncing the ball off the hurley um, but I, 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 I certainly think if you see when he took the helmet off um, there was a stop and play and Louis McQueen was running onto the pitch to get messages into players um, so whatever those moves were there, there was certainly Conor Whelan had uh, acres of space in front um, Evan Nyland even though named corner forward pulled right out yeah. um, Brian Concanon named in the full forward line played wing forward but they pulled right out they were nearly playing two inside but even Kevin Cooney was playing a little bit outside whereas Conor Whelan had all that space inside to himself and he, he was punishing him he was and that, that felt Lim like a that felt like a dangerous game for Limerick to play like you're leaving red hot form Whelan inside one on one uh, like, you know yeah. it, it's a tightrope yeah, oh, and there's a very fine line. Like it could work out, it mightn't work out. Like you're, you're. Look, you're basically. You ask any top forward what they want. 
and they want space. It's quick ball in and space. And Galway got that in the, in, in the first half. What, what was noticeable as well is the quality of the ball coming in was very good. So that, that means the lads out the pitch, not that they weren't working hard enough, but they, they just weren't, I suppose, reading the play. They weren't uh, reading the break of the ball. They weren't getting on the ball to to take 1% off that delivery coming in because he was really getting good ball. Now, there, there is one or two times he popped a point, possibly should have taken on his man, maybe drawn a foul um, or, or head down go for goal because he's as strong geez, he's as strong as an ox and he has the speed to do it so I, I think one or two times he, he, he could have questioned that yeah. um, but look I, I suppose you look at Galway as well like that team I have it here in front of me there's no one really that you'd say oh he's going to retire at the end of this year um, now there is for a few lads there is a lot of miles on the clock but you see lads coming in like Tom Manning came on Unlucky not to start. Fenton Burke came on. I know after the 67 minutes game, it was nearly over. Um, Connor Cooney came on. He could easily have started. Uh, Liam Collins, right? I can tell you, Liam Collins, he's a phenomenal player, but him coming on yesterday, it looked like a minor against a, a, a senior intercounty player. Like, they just uh, body wise, his best. Uh, approach is just hit the gym over the over the winter and really focus on hitting the ground next year um, because there is a few lads uh, Evan Nile and other lad I think a few lads on the Galway team they, they need to, to bulk up um, if they're competing with the likes of Limerick because you, you look at the, the Limerick half back line even without Declan Hannon so Dermot Burns what 6 foot 2 6 foot 3 Kyle Hayes 6 foot Three, yeah. uh, William O'Donnell, yes, uh, mass as well, six yeah. foot two. Like, do you know, it, it's it's boys against men um, for for some of the positions. Like, and you think that's the way the game has gone. The the likes of your your Jodine, your Dots, your Callahan, those small lads, they're they're nearly being pushed to one side. Um, now I know. Look, those two were, and I hate saying it because that's the one we best friends. With, but those two were the exception because they were just physically they were very strong as well. Um, but the, the day of the small intercounty player really is it, it's kind of been been pushed to one side that's quite a sad thing to say really isn't it because like one of my favourite players to watch the last decade is Richie Hogan now you're telling me yeah. he, he can't mix it up in midfield anymore and shows vision and his class That for me that's not a good direction well, look, for the game I, isn't no, it no I, I, I suppose I'm really maybe overstaying it there you're always going to have the exceptions your exceptional yeah, player but like you need the, to be exceptional like Richie Hogan and I mentioned Dotsie I mentioned yeah. Joe Dean you're going to have your exceptional players that are vertically challenged but <laughs> physically they're very strong yeah but you you go back 10 15 years ago there was a there was always a place for two or three of them on the pitch do you know those days are are gone now the, the way the game has been played mm. um they are going now. You look. It's not to say they're not going to be there at all, but I think the the amount of them you're going to have to be a special player. Yes. To make that breakthrough. No, I, 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 I dare say you're right because um, you know I'm not, I'm not always at the hurling matches, but I was I was there yesterday. Just I wanted to go along and see what I thought was going to be a great game and see this Limerick team, and um, I was at pretty much eye level and they're monsters you know they're huge oh, they are, yeah. they're huge huge men and it's so attritional in there that yeah the Richie Hogan's are exceptional but you you're probably increasingly saying well you know a good big man is probably going to come out on top against a very good little man the little man needs to be exceptional not just very good is your point yeah and, and that's it like the well I suppose the brain is going to be dictated a lot the, the, when you're making your run and all that but if you hit a 50-50 ball yeah. into uh, your exceptional hurler, or your 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 very good hurler, but he's he's physically big. You'd imagine the physically big lad is going to come out with it more often than than the smaller lad, even though he's a better hurler. Yeah. Um. It's just the way the game is going. But like you, you'd wonder where's going to be the line, um, with the fitness levels, and I suppose this, this is a, a totally different conversation. But the fitness levels, the conditioning of the players. Where is that line where it's going to stop? Do you know, you, you saw, I suppose, you, you saw it there in rugby for a long time that lads were bulking up and they, they, they weren't, it, skill was kind of being pushed to the side. And then the All Blacks there in, was it all seven, 
the one yeah, yeah the one the, the one down. The seven, they slimmed down and their their average weight uh decreased but their speed increased and their skill levels increased so mm. i suppose there's a fine line um and that's where your your sports science is so important that yeah we want lads to be physical physically strong but we also want lads to be able to move and play with pace play with intensity um, um and, and look at the end of the day you can be as strong as you want but skill is the most important well thing. absolutely and, yeah and, you, and, you and, and look you look at okay. every single one of those limerick players like they 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 can they can make a, a a hurley and a slitter talk yeah um, that's, that's and, the thing yeah. we're, we're not talking about just a huge team without the skill I mean they've got everything is the point almost yeah they Did, do they're, they're scary yeah so from that that period of 25 minutes on where Limerick win 118 to 6 points so that's an annihilation then from the 25th minute onwards yeah did, well did, you did, look at the, the, I was just going to ask did they did they do anything tactically like did did Kinnerk and Kylie because I couldn't see oh geez, they've just they've made that change and that's completely transformed the nature of the game I, nothing jumped out to me did did Limerick make any great tactical change to wrestle right, the game back if you look at the last maybe the last 10 minutes I think the fight died a little bit in in Galway and I think Limerick were passing it around a little bit more they were a little, they, they had more time on the ball so I, I think take the last 10 minutes out of it but I think right the, the 25th minute up to half time Galway's or Limerick outscored Galway six points to one. I think it was the break and play. I, I think a real turning point was the break and play when Nash took off the helmet. It gave Canaric a chance to get in. And you can see if you do look, I'll just look at the, the team here. Yeah. Um Keen Lynch, even though he's playing midfield, he pushed into the forwards a little bit more. And I think that unsettled the the Galway backs because straight away there was a, a seventh forward there. Um, and there's always a danger there with Dermot Burns and Kyle Hayes that they're always going to be attacking from the defence anyway um, is there one move they made or one decision they made I, I don't think so I, I think they just lifted um, the game and they said that right well, do you know what we can't afford to let Galway get another point ahead or two scores ahead said so we, we kick into action now and it really showed that it showed the mentality of champions um, and they know how to win they know how to win that they've proved that year after year um, but I certainly think yesterday um, even in the second half like the the first up to the 45th minute um, the the first six scores was four Limerick scores so you had Flanagan Galan uh, Burns and Tom Morrissey scored four points the only response was Conor Whelan and then the 45th minute was uh, Kevin Cooney and that was really it after that yeah. it was fairly bleak after that and it was all very very much one side after that you'd um, you had uh, Evan Island popping over a few points but it was really it was one way traffic the whole way um, and they were they, they were playing with ease I, I think the intensity that Galway played with in at, up to the 25th minute mm. they couldn't keep that going for seven. yeah so you're, you're almost you're kind of painting it as there's a degree of Galway went 100% gave it everything maybe punched themselves out is a strong way of putting it but a, a degree of that and Limerick faced with that ferocity they took a few blows but they absorbed them and then they kind of click into gear yeah you, you could nearly say it was George Foreman against uh, Ali <laughs> that was and, the, the image and, I had and, in my mind when I was describing it yeah so, yeah, so Limerick he, took it like champions of course you know took a few bangs and in my case he's saving one on the line it could have been 8 point deficit at 30 minutes that would have been you know a touch more uncomfortable but your sense is what Galway did in that first 25 minutes very unlikely to sustain that yeah, there was no way they could have kept up that intensity. Now, I'm not, I'm not questioning their, their fitness levels or anything like that, but just, I think, I suppose you create your, your normal. Yeah. And I think they were playing above their normal, or what, what their normal was up to that point. Um, it was the best I'd seen them play this year. And in every game, you're going to have your, your peaks, you're going to have your valleys. But I, I, I just think they, they went into a valley and I suppose the, the All Blacks mentality, All Blacks have a lot of teams bet before they go out into the pitch. And I suppose Limerick, Kilkenny were like that for years. Limerick are like that now because they, they, they're going for the four in a row. Yeah. But when they got ahead, 
possibly mentally uh, God said oh geez, here well, we go they're it, on top now isn't, isn't it interesting there in that clip we played at the start that Shefflin even said at half time where Galway are leading 113 to 112 but their six point lead has been cut to five Shefflin said even at half time one point lead from, from all you know all the good we had done in the first half didn't really feel like enough and that, yeah. that's the Limerick aura in you know that yeah. sitting there comfortably in that Galway dressing room at half time yeah, yeah, and look, the, the way Limerick played in the first half, I think going in at half time, I, I, I'd, I'd imagine the dressing were very calm yeah. and and happy being down by one point. Uh, but look, you, you look at every championship winning team; it's the 10, 15 minutes at the start of the the second half. That's when a lot of games are won by by championship winning teams, mm. regardless of the sport. Regardless of it is rugby, I know we mentioned all yeah, that. Yeah. Regardless of it is rugby, it is uh, Gaelic football. You saw uh, Dublin last week against Mayo. It was that period in the second half, that fifteen minutes in the second half, that they just they obliterated Mayo. The same yesterday, just the fifteen minutes start to the second half. Limerick got on top, and I suppose that's when. Um, yeah, the the seed of doubt is I suppose the, the the end of the first half is when the seed of doubt is sown in Gawa's mind when they're up by six, giving it everything, and all of a sudden, wasted blows for half time, only up by a pint. Um, I, I'm sure that seed of doubt was there, and yeah. then the way got Limer came out at the start of the second half. That seed just grew, mm. um, and the, the the doubt just uh, it, it spread in the the Galway dressing yeah, room. We're not coming back against this lot. Um, yeah. Clerical Kenny today, who would Limerick rather see in the final? Oh, that that uh, that's a good question. Um, I think I. Jeez, you caught me with that. Um, <laughs> I could I, I don't I don't have an answer myself. I don't know. I think yeah, much I, look, I, I think I think today is going to be a cracking game. I think it's going to be an absolutely cracking game. Um, I think Kilkenny did enough to get through Leinster lucky enough to, to win the Leinster final I think they're where they want to be I think Derek Ling has them where they want to be you have Adrian Mullen back um, I think they're going to rely heavily on Owen Cody I know everyone talks about TJ Reid but I think Owen Cody I suppose the younger legs He's he. I think he's more important to Kilkenny but if you look at the, they're saying Rory Hayes might mark him yeah very possibly um, pr- probably should go man mark and forget about where, where you're playing you're following him no matter where he goes but the the thing I and I think this could uh, if the game is tight with 10-15 minutes to go I think what's going to be a big big factor is you look at the Kilkenny bench and there's there's household names there you have Walter Welsh uh, you have Richie Hogan you have Conor Fogarty you have Killian Buckley um, like there's good lads there that are going to come in um, and I think they, if it's tight with 10 minutes to go I think they're going to make a difference and it, possibly yeah. the Kenny in the final From the Clare side um, like Anthony Daly I think in the Sunday Times today he was talking to Christy O'Connor he probably summed up the sense in Clare pretty succinctly he was saying that all the talk in the pole ball week has been about the fitness of Conor Cleary John Conlon McInerney he said if we have the three boys people think we'll win it if we don't we probably won't. Now, all three are named to start. Certainly in Conlon's case and in McInerney's case, the feeling is pretty positive that they will play. And if you have Conlon and McInerney and Dermot Ryan, that's a hell of a half-back line. But then Conor Cleary and that shoulder injury, which is now seven weeks old, is far less clear. And certainly without Conor Cleary, Galan scored 1-3, three, won another three frees. Um he seems to be pretty essential in their eye not least with the aerial capability that Kilkenny have so I don't know your guess is as good as mine do you see it as that kind of straightforward for, for Clare that if they if they have those three that, that maybe nudges them far closer to being over the line than otherwise um, I certainly wouldn't say that um, I think if if um, Clare have a full hand I think it's still going to be a battle and I think I really really think it could go either way I would not rule out a draw today yeah um, if I if you put a gun to my head now, I would like the. I suppose you look at the the build up to it. You look at the the gap that Kilkenny have had between the Leinster final and today. Um, you'd have to say Clare by a point, possibly two, but I certainly wouldn't be surprised with a Kilkenny win. Oh, so you think the gap? Um, you think the gap is a disadvantage for Kilkenny? Um, yeah, I I do think so. I think no, I, I 
it, it can be what you make of it. I think yeah. the gap between the Leinster final and today, I think, has given to Kenny an opportunity to reset, uh, to get Adrian Mullen back, get a, get the bodies right. Because the way the, the championship, the, the Munster Championship and the Leinster Championship is, with games week after week after week, it takes its toll on the players. Mm. And I think if you can get to a Leinster final or a Munster final and win it, I think the way the championship is structured now, I think that four or five weeks off, I think allows you, it's not like it was before where you're, you're away from it and all other teams, but I think it allows teams to to just regroup and get any ailments that are that are, are up or within the, the group. It allows you to get them right and refocus. Um, and you, you have a fair idea who, like realistically, you could be up against three teams. No disrespect to the 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 Joe McDonough teams, but that narrows it down to two. Then, so you, you have a fair idea who you're going to play against. You, you have plenty of time to to look at your videos of the Munster Championship or Leinster Championship, the games they've played, and then the game that they play in the quarter final. Mm. Um, play them in the semi final. So I think, yeah, it can be a disadvantage. But I do like there's there's two ways you, you, and I don't want to talk about Dublin now. But you look at Dublin 2013. I think if we if we bet Wexford the first day, I don't think we'd have won uh, Leinster Championship that year. I think the the games week after week after week. I think uh, builds momentum as long as your your core group um, stays together and injuries don't uh, cause havoc and like that. Kilkenny getting. Uh, Adrian Mullen back yeah. and a few bodies right. I certainly think it will. It will. It can. It can help them. I, I certainly think it can help them today. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see how it goes. I mean, all the talk about defence. I last thought. I thought James O'Connor made a great point in the Sunday Independent today. He watched back the semi final last year, and if you tuned into the semi final last year after twenty seven minutes, Kilkenny are eight points up. They're cruising. Um, but actually watching it back he, he just chalked it up that they created in that first half hour exactly the same number of scoring chances Kilkenny only had one wide Clare had nine wides and they were eight mm. points down so if they had their shooting boots on like defence would have taken care of itself for all those issues and they would have been right in the game on the half hour mark so like anything you need to take your chances as well uh, we're pretty yeah, much out yeah sorry I certainly think they'll have learned from last year. Like they, all the talk going up to that semi final was, uh, Clare are going to be the only team that will put it up to Limerick, like yeah. similar to what it is this year. Um, and they went in. Uh, you'd wonder was there a bit of complacency, um, probably a lot of tired bodies as well. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I certainly think that they'll learn from that. And this year now, they're coming up there to Crow Park today. You know, I think there's a bit of havoc with the trends going up. Right. But they, they, the players won't be affected. They're going up today. Um, they're not going to let anything get in the way. They, they, they're not even thinking about the final. They're just thinking about today's game. Yeah, I would think so. Well, listen, let's hope it's Cracker. Rhino Dwyer, thank you very much. Appreciate it. No problem. Thanks, Chuck. Cheers. Rhino Dwyer there with us, a former Tipperary and Dublin hurler. And just to mention, by the way, Unexpected news in ahead of the World Cup. Scotland, of course, are in Ireland's group. Stuart Hogg, who is still only 31 years of age, has announced his immediate retirement from rugby. So Stuart Hogg won't be at the World Cup. He will play no more rugby at the age of 31. He said, it's difficult where to start. It's with great sadness and an enormous amount of pride. I'm announcing my immediate retirement from playing rugby. I fought with everything I had to make the Rugby World Cup, but this time my body has not been able to do the things I wanted and needed it to do. We knew this day would come eventually. I just never thought it would be this soon. So Stuart Hogg retires. He will not be lining out against Ireland at the World Cup. That's just some breaking news in the last half hour or so. Join the conversation at Newstalk FM on Facebook for the latest headlines, videos, and thought provoking podcasts. Newstalk. Conversation that counts. Here, what's the story with Ruth and her zero alcohol beer? Maybe she's doing dry January. She's a bit late. <laughs> Could be on antibiotics. I'm not sure Ruth is fit as a fiddle. Um, maybe she has an important fiddle recital? Nah, that was last week. It wasn't bad, actually. Got the car with you tonight, Ruth? No, I don't. You never need a reason to enjoy a great tasting beer. Heineken Zero. Zero explanation needed.
Hi, I'm Ken Doherty. For all van drivers and business owners, insuremyvan.ie is Ireland's low-cost van and commercial insurance specialist. For high-quality van and all commercial insurances, call insuremyvan.ie. City Financial Marketing Group Limited, trading as insuremyvan.ie, is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Design driven by impulse, performance in tune with your emotions, an instant connection, electric. At Cupra, we believe in galvanizing these instincts. It's why the Cupra Born, our 100% electric model, looks, feels and behaves unlike anything else on the road. Follow your impulse and visit cupraofficial.ie to see our incredible July offers. Cooper Born. Test drive today. Own it tomorrow. We're sorry to inform you of yet another delay. No, not the train this time. It's John. He's